So this is a, a JCR view of the world, and frankly, I was not expecting that many people. It, maybe you just fell asleep from the last talk. If you want to leave now, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> JCR is a Java content repository. It's a, it's a content store, and I work for Adobe. Uh, for a group, we have a product called CQ5, which is, uh, used to be called Day Communique. So it's, it's a high-end uh, content management system and content application framework. So we, we power sites like uh, McDonald's, General Motors, kinds of big, big things, big websites, not as big as, you know, it's not huge data. Uh, it's not even web scale. You don't need web scale to run General Motors. It's big, but it's not that big. So it's, it's big content management systems, which are based uh, in a very extensive part on Apache Software Foundation projects. Our stuff is based on Apache Jackrabbit, which is the JCR content repository, Apache Sling, which is the applications layer, runs on top of Apache Felix, which is the OSGI uh, framework, and a number of other Apache projects. I'm quite active myself in the Apache Foundation. I'm a, a, active in several projects and currently on the uh, board of directors. So this is the product that I work on is a commercial product, CQ5, but it's based, I would say 95% of the critical components are open source. Uh, this is the notation that, that we're going to use. So JCR, who, who's familiar with JCR? Wow, great, a number of people. For those who are not familiar with JCR, you don't need to know about the details for this talk. It's, JCR is basically, we often say, it's a file system on steroids. You can, uh, JCR stores contents in path. It's a big tree of path, of nodes, and properties. And a node has a path, like in a file system, with a single root, slash, like in a Unix system. And a property can be anything from, a, from an integer to a four gigabytes video. It can be either structured things, strings, integers, booleans, or uh, binaries. The nice thing for content management is that JCR brings that under one umbrella. Usually when you do content management, you start with a database, no SQL, SQL, doesn't matter. And then you have files. And what do you do with the files? Put them in a file system. And then you have this kind of mix of things with an impedance mismatch. It's not fantastic to do content management. With JCR, you can put everything in a repository. And I'm going to show you that we really put everything in a repository. The motto is everything is content, everything is a tree which is wrong. You know, if you would say everything is a graph, that might be easier to accept. Everything is a tree, doesn't really work for everything. You need to do everything? No. So we think that having a, a tree is good enough for the needs of content management, and I'm trying to uh, demonstrate that by giving some examples of tree structures. So we often say that JCR is the best of both worlds between database and file system. You get some attributes of a database, you can do queries, you can have some structured content, and you can have totally unstructured mess like a file system. And if you don't go up to, you know, if you don't really do a mess, it's much better. So you can have kind of the, as much structure as you want and as much freedom as you want, which is very nice. And you get a few nice features like uh, full text search, uh, sort orders in a folder, you can sort the nodes so they have a definite order. Uh, you can observe changes, subscribe to changes under a given path to get a callback when things happen. So JCR provides a lot of functionality at the application level, locking, all that kind of stuff. So compared to, uh, you know, the trendy NoSQL, MongoDB, CouchDB, these databases, I would say in short, uh, the current JCR implementations are not as scalable, they are not web scale, but they offer much more in terms of application functionality. So depending on your needs, that can be very useful. This is how you would see the JCR repository. This is the JCR Explorer from our product. It basically looks like a file system, but with a bit more uh, detailed views inside when you go to the property level. So uh, the notation that we're using, the, the blue uh, icons are folders, obviously. The, the, the orange uh, diamond is a node, and the, the green titles denote properties. So here we have a top-level node, which is a page would be a page on your, on your website. And it's got some content. We put that on a JCR content node. That's a convention, just to have something that's easy to move around and manage. This node in here has two properties. One would be the text of the page, which uh, might include mockup, 
could be HTML or HTML snippets, whatever's convenient. And it has a title, so some, some kind of structure, but very simple. And then for the images, the page has a folder. So under the, under the page node, you have a, a images node that can contain 1 to n or 0 to n images. It's fairly convenient. You have everything in one place for your page. If you want to move the page, drag the node or move it with an API call. I often call that a micro tree, kind of a local tree that describes uh, a piece of content. So it, this is obviously a, an extremely simple example. This is a bit more realistic. This, this looks a bit like what we're doing in our product with a JCR. So you have a, a page, uh, same thing, kind of a website page with a JCR content node to structure things. It ha has a title. And now the content is structured. We started in the first example as a, having our content as one block of uh, HTML markup text. It's not ideal. Here we, we split up this content into smaller blocks, which would be the, 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 the functional blocks on your page, like header, uh, may, uh, the dif different sections, and maybe some, uh, some notes at the end, footnotes or something. So you can split up this and have a more convenient structure. And if you use the, the frameworks that, that we use, like Apache Sling, you can also drill down at the individual level. If you wanted to have the, just the text of this page, you could address the content blocks node, render it, and you have the text version. And the images are in a different folder. And what's interesting to note here is that the first image.jpg is not a file, it's a folder. It's a JCR folder because it contains different representations in, in, in inside it. If you need a small image for a mobile device, you could select that one or a larger one. So again, uh, some similarities to file system. You have this first image.jpg. If your rendering system is set up right, you will just ask for this node and get it. And the system internally will select whatever node is best suited to send it. So again, kind of this macro, uh, micro structures that, uh, that, that you can use. And um, in this case, we would use the JCR observation to, to do the renditions. The smaller images, they would be generated because someone dropped an image in this uh, first image node, and then you get a callback, tells you an image has come in, and you can compute in your system the renditions. So JCR observation is a very cool way of being alerted when something happens in your content, reacting to it, and creating uh, specialized renderings or whatever. Totally different example, a print queue. And this is where the uh, older guys like me might recognize the old Unix uh, file system uh, layout. We, you ju have just a few folders to handle your print jobs. One folder for incoming jobs, one folder for each printer that you're managing, and the files will just move between the, the nodes according to what they're doing. So the file com comes into incoming, then you move it under the printer when it's being printed, the printer has a done folder where you can put the jobs that are finished, etc. Very simple, very clear, very transparent way of managing a kind of your printing workflow. And this is how it was used. Uh, it's probably still like that in, in Linux uh, for print spooling, where just based on file names, on, on, on a very obvious structure if you look at that. Another structure, this is an example from Sling, where you have a mapping for virtual hosts, kind of a configuration in this case. So this is not content anymore, uh, probably speaking, it's a configuration. But it's got the same uh, obvious shape where it's obvious to see that you're matching uh, host names and you're redirecting them to a different path in your content. So we started with plain web content, now we have configurations, and it's the same, it's the same you know, mechanism, same thing, uh, same tools to use that, you can version that, you can lock that, you can observe that, use all the, the nice content features that you have. And this is uh, pretty much the, the content structure that we're using in our product. If you're familiar with the Linux or Mac system, it's, it's very similar. We have a slash content folder for the proper web content. We have libs where we store our code. I'm going to show that later. Uh, we have etc. for the configuration stuff and var from, for the things that are moving. So your system in the end looks a bit like a Unix file system, but there's much more inside because of JCR underneath. Here's, uh, I told you that we also store code in our system, and indeed, uh, our system is based on the OSGI, so a module is a Java jar file with some metadata. To install a module in your system, in our system, you just copy it to an install folder. 
There, there are some folders in the system named install that are in a tree that's configured to be watched for code. So you, you drop a Java bundle in that, it's activated, started, everything. If there was a different version, the system automatically takes the best version, the, the, the latest version, etc. So we also have the code in our system. Meaning if, we, if I need to take a copy of a customer system, I take a copy of the repository, I have everything. Code, configurations, content, and I can test it in the exact same situations. Backups, you get the, the whole thing in the backup, so it's very convenient. Here's another, another example uh, how you, you could define a workflow. A workflow consists of several states which have preconditions and transitions. Same thing, you do a small tree, and you give names to things so that it's easy uh, it's obvious for people to, you know, when you look at this as, as a developer, already gives you a very good idea of, of what the people were, whoever designed that was thinking, and how you would start using it. And we found in our, in our group, uh, our group of developers, we are about maybe 30 people, having these clear structures is a great way of collaborating. You, you, de you define the structure, it's a bit like a Java interface or an API that you agree on. And once you have defined the structure, uh, each, everyone can go work in their own corner and use that to, to communicate without needing to having tons of meetings and coordination uh, work, you know. Um, we, we saw the example of the workflow model. This is how a workflow instance would like. So when you're running a workflow, what do you need? You need to know what is the current state, and you need to point to the workflow that you're running. Here we would use a path. So to have a pointer in this system, because it's all based on path, it's also a path. So this thing is, ru is running, and it's telling you, I'm running according to the etc. models approved content workflow. And you see the, the chronological structure. Uh, this is also something that we use very often, year, month, day, for data that al that's always coming in, allows you to purge, backup, copy the data very easily, again, based on path, that means something to the user but are also useful for the, uh, at the system level. Another, so I'm just throwing the examples at you, huh? uh, just quick examples, but I think uh, you, sh you should get the idea of how we, how we work with this JCR system. Another example is, is ingesting assets, something you often do in a, in a content system. You have raw images come in, and you need to validate them. Maybe there's some legal review. Do we have the right copyright on this image? You need to compute different renditions, uh, add some metadata, etc. So here also the, the pattern of having different folders works very well, also because of the access control. Here you could, use, you could leave your uh, var public incoming folder totally open. It's publicly writable. And then you start restricting things. So to validate might be accessible only to your staff because th these are the ones who are reviewing the images. And then when they say this image is good, the system moves it under content assets, and then it's a system that's in charge of, of defining the path and stuff. So uh, splitting things into different paths is also very useful in terms of access control, tracing, knowing uh, who does what, etc. This is an example from uh, a Sling, Slingbox. It, Slingbox is an example in the Apache Sling project, which is uh, ordering coffee, you know, like kind of a mini Starbucks. You have people ordering coffee, and you have people preparing coffee on the other side of the counter. And here the counter is between the private and public folder. So in the public folder, you have people posting uh, orders from a, from a web application. The system watches it based on JC observation. And when uh, an order is approved, it's moved under the private folder, and that's where the staff can see the orders and process them. Again, clear access control. It's obvious to your admin uh, you know, what the private and public folders mean. It's much easier to see than it, if you have a complex graph system, which might be useful, but you don't need it in such a, such a case. Um, another example from the same sample, which is the configuration. You know, you do your Starbucks uh, Slingbox thing, and you need to define what types of coffee do you have. You do a configuration file. No, you just do a node, a small tree of nodes. Here, this is the configuration for these, these options. If you need a new type of coffee, you just add a node under the coffee type in the coffee type folder, and your system will include that in, then in the list of options. So another example where it's configuration data that you're using, but by putting it in JCR, again, you benefit from locking, versioning, observation, access control, etc. So that's it. It's a short talk. 
uh, you know, try to get you interested in maybe in JCR. But even if you're not using JCR, I think sometimes people are using are saying that we don't want path in in your system in our system. We want big bag of data with uh, binary indic uh, pointers. Sometimes you need that, but if you're doing content-based applications, I think uh, having the path and, and taking advantage of them can give, uh, give you great benefits. And that's what we're seeing in, uh, in JCR. So hierarchy is not dead. We used to have hierarchical databases when I was young. Maybe some of you guys remember that in the audience. And they, they went away. But for content, I think hierarchy is very useful, and that's what we're seeing. This system allows you to do very transparent content that's easy to grasp and understand, and it has a kind of a fractal property because of the macro tree of the hierarchy and then the micro trees that you get at the, at the node level. So I have like two minutes for questions maybe, otherwise I'll be around today, not tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow, today evening, so if you have questions, grab me today. Thank you. Hi, uh, I wanted to know how do you wor work with it? Like, you have uh, staging servers and production servers, and like you just commit to one repository and then push to the others. Right. It's like a distributed. Uh, so the question is, control yeah, how do you work with like authoring and publishing servers? Yeah. So in our system, usually we have a few authoring servers, maybe two or three, depending on how many authors you have. And then you usually have many more publishing servers. And we do actually replication. So on the authoring server, we will use observation to tell us this node has changed. And then we look at the, net, the state of the node. And if it has a flag that says this is ready for publishing, then we push it to the published servers as replication. And we usually do not cluster the public servers, the publishing servers. They are independent, but they all replicate it from, from the authors or from a hierarchy of authors. So replication works very well in this case. Allows you to keep the publishing servers very simple, which is a good plus. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, can you back up externally, uh, JCR? Uh, yeah, uh, it depends on the implementation. It's not defined in the spec, uh, but in, uh, in uh, Jackrabbit and in our product, we are able to create a, a big archive of the repository. But it's all files. So you can also just copy the files. The, the whole repository is in one folder in the file system. So you can, you can back that up. In our product, uh, the files are append only, like Lucene indexes, same principle. So even if the system was still writing, you can do a hot backup. Some of the trailing uh, part of the file might be corrupted but it's, or you know, incomplete because it was being written. The system can recognize that and know up to how, how much it is good. So you okay. can uh, do a hot backup very easily, yeah. Thank you. Just based on files. Okay, we have time for one last question. If not, oh, there's one. Uh, is there some kind of support for things like hot swapping disks or something? So you add the disk with data and you right. take it uh, away? Not in JCR and not in our product. But because it's all based on files, uh, it should be possible to use like the, the Linux uh, LVM, Volume Manager, uh, underneath. And that, I don't know if customers are using that, but that should be possible because the storage is, the JCR, the, the JCR files are append only, and the, the indexes are Lucene. So it should work, but I, I don't know if it's been tested. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now have a 10-minute talk, short break. <laughs>